it's like adding the value for the work because you feel that mm-hmm. how you feel that proud you are doing something more than just work because you are serving the nation and you are serving also the environment mm-hmm. at the same time. Welcome to the Let's Turn the Tide podcast by Veolia Near and Middle East. I'm your host, Nadine Zidani, sustainability expert and founder of Mina Impact. This podcast dives into the environmental and climate challenges facing the Middle East, but also spotlights the solutions that can make a difference. Now it's time to welcome our guests. So for today's episode, our guest is Emna Eliamahi. Emna is an operations and maintenance engineer at Veolia Middle East, working at the Wahsan Biogas to Energy plant in Dubai. In this episode, we'll dive into the world of biogas, exploring the challenges and opportunities in biogas production and its potential to address climate change in our region. Emna, welcome to Let's Turn the Tide podcast. How are you Mm -hmm. doing today? Good, alhamdulillah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Really a pleasure to have you today with us. Emna, we often hear about the need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions Mm -hmm. to combat climate change. And for that, we need to switch to renewable energy. And often, you know, we hear about solar uh, or uh, wind energy, but I've myself never heard about biogas. So could you explain in simple terms what biogas is? Biogas is a drive from organic waste. Uh, and it is it is a group of gases. Biogas is a group of gases, mm-hmm. mainly consists of methane and carbon dioxide. And there is a small percentage of hydrogen sulfide, oxygen, and other gases. This gas can be used as a fuel for heating purpose or electricity. How it is generated? When microorganism will break down the organic waste in absence of oxygen, biogas will release. Uh, to make it more simple, if you bring a waste and put it in a closed container and keep it for a days, mm-hmm. bacteria will start to react and biogas will release. So, biogas, whenever there is organic waste, there is there will be a biogas generated. Interesting. What kind of organic organic waste? Organic waste it could be uh, food waste. Uh, agricultural scraps, animal waste, or uh, waste water sludge. Okay, interesting. So it's it's something that is produced through our organic waste. So the waste that we, I mean, me and you and, and people generate. Exactly, but it should be, it has to have a, a specific process, then it will be, start to generate. But yani, whenever there is waste, there uh-huh. will be a biogas generation. Okay, and this biogas, we can use it as a source of energy. Yes, but you need first to filterize it, purify the gas. Mm -hmm. It's as when you uh, fuel your engine car, you need to make sure the fuel, you will will purchase the best one. So we need to make the biogas purifier. Mm -hmm. Then we can use it for the engine to, why? To reduce the emission that will be produced by the engine. So since we're in the UAE and you work, Emna, in a, in a plant in, in Dubai, can you give us like a concrete example of usage of biogas? Recently, we commissioned a site where we are using biogas that are produced from wastewater treatment plant. And we use it to generate electricity that fed back the wastewater treatment plant. Um, how it started? It's better always to explain before and after. Mm -hmm. Before, waste water is collected from our houses, send it to the wastewater treatment plant, and then they start to uh, filterize, uh, treat the wastewater to produce treated water for the Dubai city. Uh, Biogas is burned to an open area and 9% only used for heating purpose. From that, uh, Dubai and all people start to think about it. What could be, what can we make use of this biogas? Because it's increasing, increasing the CO2 emissions, is affecting the all around area there. So they was thinking about, there is a vision, there is a vision is, has been there. Dubai tw- by, 2020, by 2030, emission to decrease 30% of CO2 and by 2050 to use 50% of a green energy. 
and Veolia have the same vision, like decarbonization, depollution. They came to the picture and they explained that we can take the biogas, filter it, send it to an engine mm -hmm. and produce electricity that will feed back your site again. So uh, that's what we did. Interesting. Recently. So you're not creating more emissions. Instead, you're reusing it, and and there is like a loop within the plant itself to uh, exactly. Also, we are we are controlling the emission from the engine. Plus, we are not taking another resource. It's like we are not using the natural gas or fossil fuels. We use biogas. So from waste, we generate electricity. And hundred percent all the electricity need. You were able to generate that from biogas? Yes, I can say it's 70%. Okay. Currently, 70% is covered the need of a sewage treatment plant of Dubai. Also, we are running our site with this electricity. So we are not using the grid electricity. We're using also the green energy. Plus, a small part, we are just using solar uh, and energy as well. Interesting. Very interesting. It sounds like a very promising uh, source of, uh, of energy, listening to you. So could you like, in your view, tell me more about the potential of this uh, uh, biogas energy as an energy source in, uh, in our region? By utilizing the biogas from uh, sludge waste, we are able to decrease 70,200 ton of CO2 emissions per year, which is equiv equivalent to planting 700,000 trees. So biogas have a potential that we can make use of it. It's again a waste of from waste of the waste we are generating electricity instead of using natural gas or natural resources. And does it have the potential to go outside of the plant, like really as an energy source for I don't know my house? You know. You mean that if you can use this uh, this energy to power off your house? Yes. yes, sure, because it's either. We was deciding to give them back to to reduce their uh, electricity, but it's fine. Also, you can use it for the houses as well. Okay, so it it has a lot of potential. Uh, yes, exactly. Even the people is outside UAE, they start to do it on their home. Oh really? So they are using the biogas from their home. Uh, so it water is collected in a tank, and then uh, biogas will produce, and they use it for their in the cooking and electricity. Some of them. Oh, wow, that's mm. awesome. I've never heard about that. Yeah. So, uh, Emna, what do you see as uh, next steps uh, for advancing biogas production and use in the UAE and the region? Uh, biogas have a lot of potential. And, you know, we have a lot of food waste on a daily basis. And there is we can make use of it. We can take this food waste and convert it to energy. From food waste, we can generate biogas and convert it to electricity. It's the same as uh, landfill. We have less area now, and then they just bury the uh, waste in the mm -hmm. landfill. And then after years, the biogas start to release. Why not put it in a closed container? And then when biogas were released, we can make use of it and generate electricity instead of increasing the CO2 emission to the open area. Is it something that Veolia is already doing in the UAE? And it's not in the UAE, but they are doing it around the world. It's there, but there is a potential and uh, planning to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Especially that, as you said, food waste is a, is a big issue in, uh, in the in UAE Middle and the East, region. Yeah. Yes, exactly. unfortunately. Very interesting. Is there anything else that you want to share with us about biogas? It, you might think really it's a waste, but really mm -hmm. and it's a we are brought from waste, we are generating electricity in the city of using uh, natural resources. And we are, we are putting a positive uh, impact on the environment as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I'm not an expert as you, Emna. I found it very innovative, mm -hmm. you know, from a, like a problem that we have. We managed to treat, you know, the waste plus, you know, to generate uh, uh, energy out of it. This is like super innovative and super interesting. So exactly. I'm sure that you'll have a lot of work in the next couple of years. Exactly. Talking about work, Emna, uh, I'm curious to know more about you and your background. Before we started the podcast, you told me that it's been four years that you, you've been working for Veolia. 
Yeah. Can you tell us more about your background and what inspired you to start a career in environmental services? Okay. Uh, I, st I actually have a background in mechanical engineer from United Arab Emirates University. Uh, once I finished my grad, uh, I graduated from university. I have started to look to different opportunities to find a job. And uh, during uh, COVID, I have an opportunity to work with Veolia. So I started my work with Veolia during COVID where everything have been stopped. Water sector has not stopped. Energy sector, uh, sector is still running. So I joined Veolia where we are using, uh, we are treating seawater to produce portable water for nation. So I saw how is there really a uh, lack of resources. Yani we have less resources and then we use it and then we produce something. We, so we serve nation at that time. Then I have moved to uh, energy sector where we are from waste generate electricity, which is something totally different to me. Even I was thought how from waste we are going to generate electricity. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I'm working now in energy sector, but it's not only energy. We are also serving the environment. Yeah, it's a, it gives you like a real purpose. I love what you said, Emna, about everything. It was during COVID, everything mm -hmm. stopped. Exactly. But I found this job that is basically providing essential service to the nation. <laughs> exactly. So how, does it, how did it change your perspective about work? It's like adding the value for the work because you feel that mm -hmm. how you feel that proud you are doing something more mm -hmm. than just work because you are serving the nation and you are serving also the environment mm -hmm. at the same time. And you see how is the climate change have been affecting a lot now. When I just remember back to the school, we was having the awareness and we are doing like go to the beach and collect the waste and uh, do the planting and all the things, but we did not feel it exactly. But recently we see how the uh, the rain season in the UAE have been changed. We feel it now. It's, we live yes. in the life how the, changes, how the things has been changing. Even the temperature has been changed, all the things. So feeling proud to work in the service, environment service that at the end of the day, you are helping If you are not going to the negative things, mm -hmm. you are helping and supporting the environment. So it's, yeah, and you feel proud about things. It's just on, not only work, you are adding value at the same time. 100% and you can be proud. Yes. <laughs> so you're now focused on biogas. Can you tell me more what's your, practically speaking, your job uh, at Veolia in, in the biogas field? What do you do? I'm actually focused more now in uh, maintenance, but I'm also doing some operation things, but mainly in maintenance. So we are preparing the maintenance planning. We are checking to make sure that all the time asset is available. So we will not stop, stop the site and we will reach the target uh, at the end of the day. Because whenever we are going to stop the site, it will be affected. So I'm working the maintenance, uh, planning and uh, managing the team. How so many people in the team? Um, we have around six. So uh, operation and sometimes mm. also <laughs> working in operationals. What would be your advice for anyone uh, uh, willing to pursue a professional career in environmental services like you? Uh, just you will feel proud. You are adding some value. Not it's just not, not only work. You are adding value to the to this generation and the next generation. You are serving environment and really we are seeing how the changing now in the climate is changed. It's not only in the news, it's something that we feel it now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really, yeah, we will be on the right and the, in the positive side when you are having the positive effect, not the 100%. negative effect. You're part of the solution. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So Emna, the name of the podcast is Let's Turn the Tide. So what would you advise to our listeners, uh, the one action that they can take to turn the tide? It will be something very simple, but mm -hmm. really, if you see a, seg a segregated bins, just put the waste based on the segregated bins, but because it really will, it will affect and it will help the people who is taking the waste and managing the waste. You might ask why, because if you put, for example, wa uh, food waste in metal waste, 
with the people who will when when metal and uh, plastic waste will go to the waste to energy plant it will it really will, it will affect the asset it will delay the work sometimes and it will generate some fumes so just make sure you put it in the right bin it will help a lot and we can see i mean we can our listeners can you know uh hear the direct impact it has on your work because mm-hmm. <laughs> you see it you know on a daily basis yeah, so yes. um yeah segregate your waste super important uh, to be done Emna, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us on the Let's Turn the Tide podcast. We learned so much and we do see, I do clearly see the potential of biogas for the UAE and, and, and our region. Thanks a lot for the work you do. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in until the end. And thank you so much to Emna for sharing with us her insights and expertise in biogas. So as usual, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also subscribe on the podcast platforms. You can also follow Veolia Near and Middle East on all social media platforms. And as usual, stay tuned for our upcoming episodes.